Good morning, and welcome back to the second day of the Pada Adventure Travel Conference and Marks. And thank you very much for joining us, joining us on today's morning session. First, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Paul Prangan. I am the Director of Communications and External Affairs at the Pacific Asia Travel Association. And I, of course, will be your host for this morning's session. Uh, before we get into it, I just have a couple technical notes just to remind you about. Uh, as you can see on the bottom of your screen, there's two functions, a chat function and a Q&A function. Uh, chat function, please uh, please introduce yourself, where you're from, what you're doing, uh, any comments or insights you might have about the presenter's uh, presentation, feel free to submit them there. However, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A function as noted on your screen. And with that, we've come to our first, oh, sorry. We've come to our session today on recalibrating tourism standards. And with that, uh, I would like to welcome the chairman of the Pot of Philippines chapter, Mr. Bob Zozobrado. So welcome, Bob. Hi, Paul. Hi. I'm all set. Can I proceed? Yes, I'll pass this over to you. You can share your PowerPoint. OK, we'll do that right now. Oh, let's see. Um, okay, one minute. All good. Okay, there you go. Uh, the biggest problem that the tourism industry is faced these days um, is the question, the big question that leisure travelers are asking themselves. Is it safe to travel? Because of that big question of the leisure travelers, we in the tourism industry are also faced with a big task to reinstate or restore travel confidence among these people. Now, why is it such a big deal? Because travel confidence is what motivates them to book that itinerary that they've longed for after all these uh, months of being locked down. And um, once they feel at ease in, in planning the trip until the time that they come back, then that is travel confidence as far as we are all concerned. Now, the only way we can offer them, or we can create, uh, restore travel confidence among these people is if we give them the idea and we convince them that it is safe to travel. When is it safe to travel? Or how do you, how do you uh, describe safe travel? I'm basing this definition actually on the standards created by the World Travel and Tourism Council. W safe travel is the movement of people from one place to the other and all the health and safety protocols established by the WHO, the World Health Organization and backed by the World Tourism Organization should always be observed from the start of the trip all the way to the finish. And these protocols should also be observed in their modes of transportation. Now, uh, to make it easy for us or for people to, to, to plan the trips, the World Travel and Tourism Council has issued safe travel passes to establishments that continuously and consistently comply with the prescri prescribed health and safety protocols. 
as established by them. Here in the Philippines, one of the earliest ones that was given a safe travel pass is this uh, five-star hotel uh, at the Ortigas Business District, Joy Nostalge, which is right across the Asia, uh, Asian Development Bank. This is such a big deal because now there is still the fear factor that has plagued uh, potential leisure travelers. And um, it's actually the, the devastation that has been created by several months or more than a year of, of this coronavirus uh, killing so many of our friends and impacting on the economy and things like that. So fear factor is still there. It has been created, the stigma has been created. So our duty in the travel, tourism industry is to get rid of that fear. In fact, there was a survey that was conducted by Bloom Consulting, one of the leading prestigious consulting agencies based in Europe. They conducted a survey and created scenarios. The first scenario that they created is there are no more travel restrictions, no quarantine at destination, and the virus spread is controlled. But guess what? In spite of that, 45% of leisure travelers do not want to travel. That's a big deal. That's a big chunk of our future uh, business that we are harping on once the uh, borders, international borders open up. They created another scenario. Um, virus is almost eradicated and the cure is found. Still, 35% did not want to travel or do not want to travel. And let's look at the best scenario of them all. The virus is fully eradicated. Guess what? There's still 15% who do not want to travel. So what do we do? These are the things that we have to combat, that we have to address. And when we address these problems, we have to take into consideration these facts. Fact number one, money was not really the reason why there was, there's going to be a decrease in leisure travel. The main reason is something else. And that is the feeling of being unsafe when they travel. So we already know that money is not really that much of a factor, but um, their safety is their number one concern. So what do we do? We offer them packages or we offer them destinations that are outdoors or that are low density not too many people are there. So they, the leisure travelers would definitely prefer, prefer that. Plus destinations have to be perceived with a very good health infrastructure. And uh, there must be a, a emergency units that must be able to take care of uh, whatever uh, COVID emergencies there may be. Okay, so those are the facts that we have to contend with. How do we respond to the new mindset in travel? we now have to repackage our whatever we're going to offer. As I mentioned earlier, expectations of people are, they wanna be safe and in a smaller, low density destination. So these should now take the limelight. These should now be put forward as the main product that we will offer as far as destinations are concerned. What else, how else should we respond? As I mentioned earlier, price is not really that much of a factor because in the survey that was conducted, only 15% considered price as a factor. So no need for you to lower your rates. Just proceed uh, uh, offering the rates that you, uh, the, you want to offer based on the standards of your product. And however, offer them something that they like, which is less crowded. And that destination must have an effective healthcare system. What else? How do, we, how do we respond? Marketing promotions must be supported by government action. Uh, the moment the leisure travelers find out that marketing strategy, the marketing promotions being offered by these destinations have the full support of the government, meaning the government should have the measures to react and to respond to whatever emergencies they may be, then the leisure travelers will feel safe. Travel confidence will be restored. And lastly, when you offer something, you must be able to pair that up with a, a team or a plan that can easily 
respond to emergencies. And um, this emergency uh, response unit or plan must be in place and must be perceived by the leisure travelers so that they will feel safe. Okay, so all over the world, in order to guarantee or to, to project the safety uh, uh, image of the destination or the transportation or whatever tourism establishment it may be, they use the following items. It's not only in the Philippines that we have this, but all over the world. By the way, let me go back to this phrase, physical distancing. I am not going to pontificate, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't subscribe to the phrase social distancing because I personally feel that is a misnomer. It is uh, an oxymoron. Social distancing is wrong because to be social, you have to be together with people, right? So how can you be social if you distance yourself from people? So social distancing should not be used. It should be physical distancing. That's what I'm using here. Um, of course, that's me. You can do your own thing. Uh, foot baths, of course, and face masks and PPEs are being used all over, temperature scans, and all these things are being used by um, uh, all tourism establishments all over the world. However, to ensure safety, the other tourism establishments, other components of tourism have further enhancements on what they should put up in order to give the feeling of safety and health consciousness to the leisure travelers. Offices on the ground are now making online check-in available. You know, and uh, that's not only in the Philippines, but all over the world, they're being do, done this. And then uh, now uh, contactless boarding passes are being issued. Even when you, when you buy your ticket, your boarding pass is also there. And then you don't have to give it to anybody. You can hold on to it. And when you get to the airport, you can have it scanned yourself. So what are they doing at the airport? At the airport, they are making sure that all the high touch areas are being disinfected and cleaned very often. And senior citizens, pregnant women, children, PWDs, and those with comorbidities are accommodated or handled at a separate area from the rest of the group. And those who are exhibiting symptoms of COVID are not allowed to enter the airport terminals. And what about the aircraft? Inside the aircraft, how safe are you? Well, here's what the air, uh, airlines are doing. I'm basing this list only from the Philippine Air, what Philippine Airlines is doing, but I'm sure that all the other airlines all over the world are doing the same thing. Cabin air is being refreshed every two minutes. And you'll notice cabin air is uh, flowing from top to bottom, not sideways, in order to further decrease the chances of contamination. And cabin services that are, uh, rig are rigorously disinfected with high-grade cleaning agents. And of course, the aircraft uses hospital-grade air filtration, which prohibits or which screens out almost the entire, uh, all the viruses and bacteria. Now, I want to take a look at this picture of the Philippine Airlines cabin crew. They're the ones welcoming the passengers. When you walk into the aircraft and you see these people, you probably will wonder, am I going on a trip or am I going to check in into an ICU? But then, but then again, you know, that's, uh, it's, that's there. They have to do that. And all the other, all the other uh, airlines do the same thing. More on the safety on board aircraft, in-flight meals are san in sanitized containers, lavatories and high touch surface surfaces are being disinfected and cabin crew are, are trained to handle those who develop symptoms while in flight. In fact, in Philippine Airlines, the last three rows are kept vacant because they are the, that's the area where people who may develop symptoms uh, while in flight are going to be placed. They're going to be isolated. Okay, what about in hotels? What are the additional uh, measures that they do? In, uh, here in the Philippines, the number of guests allowed inside a hotel depends on the size of the room. A suite can accommodate probably even four or five. 
but a regular room, only two. They must come from the same household. And advanced reservations are encouraged. And of course, the same thing, contactless transactions, even on the mode of payment, everything should be contactless. And in the hotel, the, even the dining areas are following strict protocols. I'll, give you, I'll, give, I'll show you a picture of, that's me. That's actually me. Uh, after the lockdown, I was craving, craving for my juicy steak and my wine. So I went to a five-star hotel and, and got and ordered my steak and my wine. But guess what? When I was looking at the waiter that was serving me, I was trying to wonder, is he going to serve me my food or is he going to surgically remove my tonsils? <laughs> the way he looks. But, you know, I guess they have to do that because they uh, have to follow self and self health and safety protocols. What happens in tourist attractions? What do they, what do, they do in order to avoid crowds? They now a visitor entry is controlled. Pre-registration is advised and allocated time slots are being assigned. So it's, it controls the number of people inside the tourist attraction. And of course, the exit is separate from the entrance so that there's no clustering of guests and crowds are avoided. Again, contactless transactions are being enforced. And what's more, Tour guides use lapel microphones to avoid hand contacts. Express lanes for the seniors, the PWDs and the pregnant women and isolation areas are also reserved for those who develop symptoms. Now, these are the things that we in the tourism industry have to contend with. Why do we have to do this? Because we have to be sure that the, the leisure travelers, the potential leisure travelers will develop travel confidence, will develop the sense of safety so that then they can start booking their trips and they can, we can start earning money and we can get back to pre-COVID-19 revenues that we have been aspiring for all these months. So what do we have to do now? Try to do what we can to make people safe, to make these uh, future uh, leisure travelers safe. And maybe what we can do is we can quote this very nice quote from the motivational speaker, Jack Canfield. He's also an American author. And he said, everything you want is on the other side of fear. So which means as long as they conquer their fear, they can get the beautiful things that our world has to offer. So that in a nutshell is how we can restore travel confidence by recalibrating our tourism standards. Thank you very much. I had to rush because I'm given only 15 minutes. I hope I'm within the 15 minutes. Thank you. Bob, thank you very much. Yes, you were in the 15 minutes. Fantastic presentation. If you have any questions for Bob, happy to, uh, to pass them along to him. Uh, feel free to put them in the chat. I mean, Bob can maybe stay here and answer any questions that you may have. Or if he, if he has to leave, we're happy to to pass them along to him and he can maybe get back to you. So thank you very much, Bob. You can uh, you can turn off your camera and go on mute. Okay. Thank you so much. See you again, thank you. All right, so uh, let me just share my screen here. Uh, once again, thank you to Bob for, for that fantastic presentation about uh, recalibrating his tourism standards and that what, will, what, will the, what does the current uh, current state of travel look like and what will sort of look like going forward. So we've come to uh, our games and destination experiences. So this is a chance for you to win three fantastic prizes. I'll just tell you the prizes are, they're, they're contactless metal business cards. So, we, you know, as Bob had mentioned, everything's gonna be contactless going forward, you know, hotel check-ins, try to avoid that physical contact with each other. So we're happy to be giving away three contactless business cards. Everyone Potter has one. It's actually fantastic to use. Very, very easy. Just uh, you just tap it on someone's phone and then you're sharing your contact with the person uh, with the person's phone. So in order to to win it, you have to first watch this video. So as you play the video, please pay attention to the video. Afterwards, there will be a quiz, a very short quiz. 
and then the, the first, uh, the, I guess the, the top three the top three people will then win the prize. So with that, I would like to ask my colleague to play the video. Okay, I hope all of you were paying attention because now's a chance to win a fantastic prize. In order to do that, let me just share my screen and give you the way to access the quiz. So the, the quiz will be done on Slido. So it's very easy to join. You can just scan the QR code or just go to slido.com. And the password is 819-860. So please do join the, the quiz. Uh, once everybody's there, we will then start the quiz. Please keep in mind, there's about 15 seconds to answer each question. So I hope you are paying attention. You gotta be quick on the button. The first, the first three people will be the, the prize winners. So please do join it now. Um, and again, you scan the QR code with your phone or you can go to, uh, use your web browser, just go to slido, S-L-I-D-O dot com. And the password is eight, sorry, the code is 819860. So let me just, uh, sorry. So I think, uh, I think my colleagues should be sharing the screen soon for Slido, but we'll wait for everyone to join. There is about, 53 delegates here, so please do join. Apologies for the sound of the cat in the background. OK. 
Okay. So please do join the quiz. Keep in mind, you have 15 seconds for each question. The prizes again are three contactless metal business cards. All right. What are we looking at here? Hmm. So I'll have to have my colleague here help answer that question. Uh, we're going to start the quiz. She's going to put it here. But there's the quiz, as you can see. Okay, so we have about 50 plus delegates here. So we'll wait till that number gets up. Again, if you, if you see on the screen on my right hand side, just scan the QR code or go to slidey.com and that is the code to access the quiz. I'll tell my colleagues at PADA that you can join the quiz and take part, but you cannot win. All right, please do join the quiz as soon as possible. about 31 delegates into the quiz, 33. There's about 50 plus people watching this now. So for the other 20 or so, please do join the quiz if you have a, want a chance to win a fantastic, cool prize. I'm gonna give about one more minute so it's either join now or or miss out on a great prize. So 11.07, about 11.08, we're gonna start it. So about 37 people are in. So, so I hope you guys are all pay paying attention. Oh, Phil, to join, if you look at the screen, there's a QR code. You can just scan that or go to www.slidude.com and just enter the code 819-860. I hope all of you were paying attention to that video. The, the quiz is based on that video. Uh, the video is called Wake Up in Central Luzon. So Phil, were you able to get in? Okay, we're gonna start the quiz. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds now. Ready? 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Okay, we're gonna start the game. You have 15 seconds for each question. Ready? Let's start the quiz. Okay, the first question is, how many people were in this adventure group? It's either three, four, or five. Yeah, five seconds to answer the question. Three, two, one. And the next question is, the right answer was five, so 48% of the people have gotten that right. Sorry, the answer is four. 44% of the people have gotten it right. Next question is, what was the name of the lake in the first one minute of the video? Was it Pinatuba Crater Lake, Ta Lake, or Laguna Lake? You have about five seconds to answer this question. 
Three, two, one. Let's find out what the answer was. And the answer is Pinatuba Crater Lake. 74% of the people got it right. Okay, so I think it's gonna be pretty close. What is the name of this destination video? I did mention that just before we started the quiz. So was it wake up in Cebu, wake up in central Luzon, or wake up in Locos region? Five, four, three, two, one. Are you listening to me? Yes, 84% of the people were listening to me. Okay, the next question. Who was sitting next to a guy who was surfing? Was it a lady in a swimming suit, a man in a black surfing suit, or a man with long hair? Five, four, three, two, one. And the answer was a man with long hair. 45% of the people got that right. And the final question of the day is, what were the people doing at the campfire? Were they singing, playing guitar, making s'mores, or telling ghost stories? Hope everyone was paying attention. Three, two, one. And the answer was, I believe they were singing and playing guitar. And 78% agreed with me. And that was the right answer. Okay. And then we're going to pull up the three top winners. And congratulations to Vida, Manzano, Marlene Insigni, and Sheila Ivano. Congratulations. Uh, please do send us your email address. Uh, you can use it in the chat uh, here on Zoom, or you can email us at events at pata.org. So to our three winners, Vita, Marlene, and Sheila, please do send us your information. Congratulations. Uh, send us your information. Send us just your, uh, you can email. My colleague has put the our email address in the chat, so you can email it to email your email address to them, and they'll they'll contact you and how to send you the business cards. So there's Vita's, Marley and Sheila, Ivano. Please do either email us or. Okay, so Sheila has got given us hers, and the last person. So if you haven't got your email address, please just email events at pod.org. So uh, I, I hope you guys all enjoyed the quiz. Uh, it's always a fun sort of interactive break in the day. And so once again, thank you to our platinum sponsors, the Department of Tourism Philippines. Uh, it's always it's always a great working with them. Congratulations to our winners. And thank you to all of you for joining us this morning. So What's happening in the rest of the day? So later this afternoon, we have a second part of our forum. We have our quick fire presentations that will begin at 2 p.m. Bangkok time. Uh, there are some of them, sorry, some of the topics that will be discussed, we actually touched about, touched upon at the networking session. We talked a little bit at the networking session about local cuisine, uh, community, putting our communities first, uh, our, uh, more sort of equal recovery. So we'll actually hear a bit more about these subjects during the quick fire presentations at two. Uh, following that, we have a, a panel discussion on resiliency is a new sustainability. Um, it's a fantastic topic. We have speakers from the IFC, um, Hotel Resilient, GIZ and GeoServes. And that will be moderated by our advisor for sustainability and social responsibility, Mr. Graham Harper. And then later this evening, we'll have closing remarks from Dr. Mario Hardy. Um, that will be at 9 p.m. Uh, Mario will be doing that live, so please do join us. Um, so there is still opportunities to remember to join. If you have appointments, don't forget to join your appointments for the trade show for buyers and sellers. There's still opportunities for wake walk-in meetings as well. So uh, please do take advantage of that. If you have any questions about today's session, about maybe the sessions from yesterday or the sessions that are happening later today.
feel free to email me. My name is, uh, my email is paul at potter.org. Um, if you have any uh, information, if you want more information about Pata and our activities and our events and things that we're doing, feel free to visit our website, www.pata.org. Please also note that our sessions from yesterday, actually you can view on demand, on demand, and uh, you can just go back from, you can go back to go to the program and just click on it and be able to view those sessions on demand. So with that, that is the end of this morning session. We have, uh, I said, we have sessions this afternoon. We have still have the trade show going on. So please do stay engaged. Yes, uh, Kruti, the on-demand, the, the platform is available, is still available to access for one month. So all on-demand sessions will be able to view within the next month. Of course, later, later on, we'll put them all on our YouTube channel. So you can also view, uh, view the sessions on our YouTube channel. On our YouTube channel as well, you'll see all, um, uh, all our past webinars, our sessions from our annual summit and all our past events. Um, so please do check out our YouTube channel. If you like the videos, if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe and even share it with your friends and colleagues. So I said, if you have any other questions about, about the session, please do email me or email my colleagues at events at potter.org. My email is paul at potter.org. Again, congratulations to our three winners. Our team, my team will be in contact with you to, to send you the contactless business cards. And thank you to Bob for speaking earlier this, uh, earlier this morning. And thank all of you again for joining us. Uh, take care, and I will see you this afternoon at 2 p.m. Bangkok time. Take care.